when I have been shooting, I've been leaving this lens at home. The 24-70 f2.8 is a staple lens for a lot of professional photographers. You pay good money for a lens that offers a ton of versatility and a wide f2.8 aperture throughout the entire zoom range. On paper, it's perfect. Combine this with a 70 to 200, a lens that I love, and you have 24 millimeters all the way to 200 covered, all of it with f2.8 aperture. It is a comprehensive package, but I hate it, especially for cars. Today, I'm gonna to talk about why and how I arrived here. So my main issues are these. I don't like these focal lengths. Um, and it's, two and a half pounds of compromise, which is a real drag to carry around if I don't even like using it. I did a video about focal lengths last year and it kind of strengthened my resolve even more about how much better I think cars look at longer focal lengths. So if I'm shooting a beauty shot of a car, I want 85 millimeters or more. Generally, my 70 to 200 never leaves my camera body. But there are still times you need to shoot wide, especially if you're shooting cars for a job. Uh, there are things that need to be depicted wide angle. The interior, under the hood, underneath the car, those are all things that a wider angle is well suited for. So I carried around this 24 to 70, but only as a necessity for those purposes. As I see it, 24 millimeters is, is necessary sometimes. Like I said, you need to shoot wide sometimes, but 35 isn't. I think 35 looks worse than 50, and I carry a 50. Um, 70 is good, but that's on the 70 to 200. So I've already, I've already got that. Just to be clear, this lens isn't malfunctioning, and this isn't about sharpness at the edges or how fast it autofocuses, nothing technical. This is about, do I take good photos at 24 millimeters or 30 millimeters or 40 millimeters? And the answer is no. I don't enjoy taking photos at those focal lengths. As for the compromise, um, let's back up. When I bought my first 24 to 70, I've had more than one. It was my first expensive zoom f2.8 lens I've bought. And I thought, now I have made it. And I used it a lot because I figured this is my most expensive lens. It must be my best lens. This is the tool of a professional. No one ever told me that an inexpensive prime lens is probably a sharper, more precise tool for any given focal length within that 24 to 70 millimeter range. A prime is smaller, lighter, and less likely to fail. Up to this point, I had used only primes because they were what I could afford. But I would see you know, real photographers with expensive zoom, so that's what I always aspired to. I assumed wrongly that the primes were too impractical for real working photographers. And it's taken me a long time to undo that thinking. So now you're asking, why is this zoom lens a compromise, but a 70 to 200 isn't? And that's a fair question, but it's a compromise that I can live with. I don't mind carrying this huge lens around because I love the results and that makes the trade-off worth it. Good question. A few months ago, I saw this tweet by a car photographer that I've always admired, Lindbergh Wynn, where he called the 24-70 the most soulless lens of all time. I felt an instant and deep understanding, and that may have flipped something for me. It confirmed a lot of thoughts that I'd had, and it made me start to question, do I really need to always carry this lens? In September, I went to Luftgekult, which I talked about in a previous video, and I only brought my 70 to 200 and a 50 millimeter prime. I thought if I shoot anything wider than 50, it's not gonna be a photo I like, as in it won't be very distinctive. It will be, here's everything that was in front of me. And sometimes that's fine, but I wanted unique shots to help tell a story, and for me, that isn't 24 millimeters. After shooting all day, I had zero regrets. The whole experience was a nice reminder of how satisfying it can be to go back to basics and shoot with a 50 millimeter, a lens that every photographer should own. So that's all fine for an event, but what about the other times where I said a wide angle is, is necessary, like car interiors, underside shots, roof? Well, I bought this 
20 millimeter f1.8 just to do those specific things. And maybe I'll find other uses for it. I already like it a lot more than the 24 to 70 because it's a specific tool. It's fit for purpose. This isn't better because it's a 1.8 versus 2.8. It's just better because it's a pure, more specialized lens. If you're on the fence about buying a 24 to 70 lens to shoot cars with, I say don't do it. And if you have it already, it's fine, but maybe use it sparingly. It's versatile, but don't let it make you lazy. I still have uses for the 24 to 70. I like that it has image stabilization for rolling shots, so I'll definitely keep it for that. It is a jack of all trades lens, and you know how the rest of that idiom goes. It's like having a modern new BMW G question mark, question mark, M5 on a tight, twisty road. It will do the job, it will go fast, it will make simulated noises. It's versatile, but it's bulkier, heavier, and ultimately less satisfying than if you had a more specialized tool for the job. If you think I'm totally wrong, I will humor you with a polite response in the comments, but I'm probably not changing my mind. If you want to argue, as some people have, that cars look good shot at 35 millimeters, go off, I guess. Have at it. This discussion all pertains to full frame. I don't really know conversions. I don't know crop sensor lenses. Sorry, I just had to clarify that. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you've made it this far, uh, my hat's off to you and I will see you next time.